I had a question in a webinar recently from a woman named Colleen, and she was asking how she could find the number of unique assignments uh, to a project if a project assigned the same resource multiple times for certain things, how can they find out what the unique number of resources are associated with the project? So every time a, an assignment is made, if you total them up, there could be more assignments than there are unique people. The people live over here. The project lives over here. There's a relationship diagram that kind of shows the uh, the foundation of what we were talking about. Projects have assignments and resources are assigned. Now, we banged on this for quite some time and it was a, a, a conundrum as to what we were going to do. Um, but this, uh, with the advent of automations and a parental table, we can roll up the assignments up here and then only take the, count the ones that have, uh, that are greater than zero. That means that they've only, they're going to be counted once because they're summarized between the project and the resource. This becomes the project and resource, and it only will collect those of that um, combination. So let's take a look at uh, what that looks like. I'm going to come over to projects. You can see we've got six different projects, one, two, three, four, five, six. And uh, you can see the number of unique project uh, users is one because there's only one assignment. Let's go view that particular project. Okay, this is our project number one. And you can see down below, Alan Elliott has been selected once. And this is the unique grouping and this is the total grouping. So let's add Alan again. We add an assignment. We'll come over here and select um, Alan Elliott again. And we'll say save. And now it doesn't, uh, so you can see the number of unique users is still one, but there's two assignments. Let's add another assignment. And this time we'll select someone else. We'll Antonio Friedman, and then we'll hit save. Now this happens very quickly. And some of the time you have to refresh the browser to actually see it. You see this number of unique projects. It says one, well really there's two. We have to refresh the browser because our automation is happening so quickly it gets back here uh, and you would think that it made a mistake but it has not. So now we have two assignments, one and two, and if we add um, Antonio again or let's add, add an extra third one here, Cameron Knight for instance and save and we'll come back to the project. You can see we have one cluster, two, three people it should be. I know this says two, but there's three listed here. Let's refresh. That calculation uh, is so fast that uh, uh, we don't see it yet until we refresh. Okay, how does all this happen? Once uh, we have an assignment here, and we'll go over to this assignment, we're bringing in the user's identity here and we also have the project ID here. So the, inv the combination of this and this together, and we probably should look at one that exists already. Let's look at, uh, uh, let's look at one of these assignments here, view. You can see that there's a, a field here that concatenates them. If I right click on this field and hit edit, this is really a reference field for the other table. You can see I've put them together. But before I put them together, what I did was I created a relationship up above. This is that, uh, let's go back to the relationship diagram for a second. I added this table and I um, brought down the identity here, the reference field. I wanted it to plug into the combination of this and this so that this record up here would be able to summarize up how many times an assignment with that combination happened. Now how did this record get created? Every time I create an assignment, if there is no parental record, I have an automation wake up and create the record up here. And then the uh, reference field down here is a formula that's looking at the combination of project and resources together so that they're always hooked up to their parent. So let's take a look at the automation. 
So I'll go into settings. We'll come down to uh, automations. <clears throat> and we'll view that. So once again, whenever a record is made in the assignment table, and it's going to say this, and if the project, now this is the, the key, not the key field, but the record ID is brought down from that parent table. Uh, if, it's, if it's blank, that means there's no parent record yet. So it says, okay, we're ready to trigger something, which says, take the, the value of the project uh, user ID and put it up there into the parent, the project ID user field. And that becomes the uh, the key field up above. All right, so we're passing the value from the child and creating a parent record. And now let's go see what, what happens here. We also have a relationship where projects have project ID users. Well, now that this exists here, um, how can I link it to the project up above here? I really have to look at that combination of project and resource, which was sent from here up to here to be the key field. And then I need to create that relationship and, and edit the reference field and strip off the, the user information and only connect it with the project information. I know that's a lot of stuff to talk about. So uh, I'm going to uh, go back to this table for a second. And let's look at a typical record here. Okay, now when a, an assignment is made and there is not a record ID associated with it, there's zero, then what we want to do is take that combination of project and name and put it into this field up here when we create the record and this becomes the key field. We're actually using the automation to create the key field up here. Okay, so now let's, uh, so th that's very helpful. What we need to be able to do is, you can see this related project. This is the reference field of this project. Notice the one here. How did we get this to know that th it should map to this? If I look at this reference field and edit it, what it says is it's a formula that's looking at that project ID user and finding the left side of it and inserting it in here. This was a regular field that I clicked change type to formula text and I changed it to the um, project ID, which is the left part of that concatenation. So I know that's all, uh, there's a lot of moving pieces here, but let, let, let's go back to the um, diagram because that's probably a, a very important part to look at. So we have a, a project number one and a user over here. Now you can't concatenate a user and a, a project together to make that field. That field actually um, wants to, um, uh, it, 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 you need to say user to name and concatenate it. So if we looked at the assignment uh, table again and, and we edit this field, I know it says you can't do this. I actually made a formula, a, uh, 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 the, this field. Uh, so I took the project and I concatenated the user and I said user to name. So this sandwiches them together. And when this record is created, if there's no parent already that's connected to it, then it goes up and creates that record that lives up here. And it strips off the project identifier and by formula links it to the reference field that goes to the project. And now what I can do is look at the relationship between project and project uh, we'll look at those re that relationship here. And this is where I say, I would like to see the number of unique users click. This is the summary field. And I'm saying, I want to know the number of, of, of records up above. That's the collection of those combinations 
uh, where the number of assignments is greater than zero. That's the summary um, that comes up from uh, the user field. So it's, uh, it's definitely a long pull, but uh, the idea that this information has isolates this and this. So how do you find that unique information? You end up having to summarize it up with something from each of it and then stripping it off and then counting only those that exist.